Hey you guys, I am potting up tomatoes today. So I thought I would run you guys through what that looks like for me. So I remember not too long ago, a couple years ago, I was super overwhelmed with thinning tomatoes and up potting things. I wasn't really clear on what that meant or how to go about it. So this is going to be a super basic video today just to kind of help you guys out if this is something that you're also curious about. So I'll show you guys just kind of what I'm working with. I'll link everything below on where you can find these. Um, so typically I'm going to do some tomatoes today. Always I plant my tomatoes in 128 cell plugs. I buy these from primarily from the bootstrap farmer. Um, these trays right here came from Greenhouse Megastore. The bootstrap farmer, if you can do that, I would go that route. They're much more durable. They're gonna last you for multiple seasons. Um, with the Greenhouse Megastore, it's great. You're able to buy in bulk, but you get what you pay for, um, which is these. I'll show you guys these in a second. That's what I use for my plant sale starts because they're going, they're not staying on the farm. I can't reuse them. Um, so I go for the cheaper option when it comes to those things. But these were extra that I grew, and a lot of them were old seeds that had low germination rates. So these are super spotty, as you can see. They're not all filled in, and that's pretty typical for what I was expecting out of this tray. Um, most of the times when they're seeds from the current season, um, I get 100% germination rate. I knew these were going to be low germ. So typically I start all mine in 128 cell plugs. And then what I up pot them into, these are three and a quarter inch pots, square pots. They're pretty flimsy, they're pretty cheap, but they get the job done, like I said. Um, I make my own soil here, and it is composed of compost, peat moss, and perlite. And then the cool thing about ordering these from Greenhouse Megastore is you can buy these trays that they sit in. So this will fit 18, and it's really nice because my greenhouse is overflowing. Usually I repot everything up in the greenhouse, but it is just filled to the brim. I've got my babies outside playing. So I've just moved everything out on the picnic table in the garden. And that's just kind of what my workspace looks like today. Um, so it's nice to have these trays that they set in because you can fit them pretty uniformly in the greenhouse. And it just allows me to make the most out of a small space. So I've got a couple of these trays already filled up with soil that I've just brought out here and we'll get started. Now, sometimes if I have run out of 128 cell plugs, I will start multiples and this is a four pack. Most of the time I do it in a six pack. I'll just do multiples in these. Um, what seems to be the case with these is I thought I wasn't gonna have enough. So I just sewed a couple extra Obviously, that wasn't the case. I've got tomatoes running out the wazoo. So, I'm going to show you guys what I do. So, I'll put this tray up here. Make sure you guys can get a good look at what's going on. So, where'd my tool go? Oh, here we go. This little tool came from Amazon. You need one of these. I'm sure there's a better quality you can buy somewhere else, but this came off of Amazon with some pots that I ordered a couple years ago, and I've literally used this thing for a couple years. It's great. Um, so I'm at a Dr. Witchy's over here. I'm going to grab a big one. I just take this. Make sure you guys can see. Um, stick it in. Pop that baby out. Now, typically, these I would not be doing right now. I would let them get a little bigger. So I can show you guys some brads and stuff like that, but just for the sake of getting some of those I did. So what I like to do is fill an entire tray with the same variety. That is ideal. That way I'm not using a ton of my markers and stickers and things like that. But these are kind of just what I had left over, um, the overflow of everything. So these are all gonna be different varieties and that's completely okay. So I've got my pot. What I like to do is you want to make sure that you're planting your tomatoes. So these are not the true leaves. These will fall off as this part, um, the actual plant gets more mature. So I like to try to bury up as close to these as possible. So if you look, that should be pretty doable. So I take my finger and I just rub it in here really good. Make sure I've got a good pocket and then I'll stick the plant in as low as I can. Pull 
the soil up around it. And usually I fill these when I'm uh, filling these trays, I fill them much more full than they need to be because I go through and I steal and I add to other ones. So fill it up. It didn't go quite to the leaves, but for the most part. So the reason that we you do this, the reason that you up pot is in these 128 cells, as you can see, they're only gonna be able to grow to the cell size, which this is really, really small. A lot of people actually don't start their tomatoes in those because they do have to up pot them quicker than if they were to have a four cell, which is a bit bigger, or even a six cell, which is much larger. I do these because space and I grow so many and I start so many tomatoes that for me this makes sense and I up pot them a lot quicker um, just to go ahead and give them more space in a bigger pot to where they can try to develop and become a much more mature hardy plant. So when you up pot this in here you are allowing it all this room now to grow and to develop. So that is a definite plus that is the reason why you do this. These are not ready to go outside yet so they would be stunting their growth if they stayed in here. So I up potted them in here just so they can have more room to grow and develop and then I'll just put a little marker in it that way I know what it is. This was a Dr. Witchie's one of my favorite yellow tomatoes. Pop it in and it goes back in here. So I have a ton of these to do. <laughs> my baby's over there playing. So I'm going to get busy. All right, you guys, I got quite a few of these potted up, quite a few left to go, but I'm gonna move into something else that I also am up potting up. And I just wanted to show you guys uh, the difference in them and how similar they are. So. For flowers, I have got a lot of beautiful nasturtiums. Now, for most people, you they recommend direct sowing nasturtiums. For here, mine have never done well direct sowed, and I have a couple friends of mine who are also in my same growing zone, and they say the same thing. So we've always just started ours and transplanted them out and have had much success. These I planted in a six cell container, and as you can see, they are all just... I'm late to the party on these. These need to have been potted up a while ago. So same thing. This time though, since these need to go much digger, much uh, further down and they are in bigger pots, I'm not actually gonna fill this up. I'll only just keep about maybe half a little more in here and then I'll fill over it. So let's see, get my tool out. And what I do with these two is, you can see the roots down here. I take off the excess, the stuff that just automatically falls off, create a hole just like I would before, stick it down deep. I want this to have be full, filled up until where the plant starts creating other, other flowers. I'll take some of my other soil. For me, if I'm in the greenhouse, I just pull the soil from uh, a tote that I keep it in. But since I brought all these out here, I just steal from another pot. Press it in a little. Keep filling it because by the time I water these down, it'll get compacted in a bit more. So this will allow this plant to grow even more give it a bit more stability. The only reason that you wouldn't want to up pot into these, um, because it does use quite a bit more soil. So that is a consideration that you need to think about is you are using more soil. But for me, I'm needing these plants to get more mature so that I can sell them for a dollar amount that I have in mind. Um, and I still have quite a bit. So I won't sell these for another two weeks here. So I need these to be able to develop more and then they're gonna be able to grow and be a much more much more mature plant in this size pot than in this six cell container. So that is the reason why uh, you up pot. You do not have to, you could start seeds in this. Just know that it, if you're doing this for your home garden, this is probably gonna cost you quite a bit more money in soil and materials if you were to just go buy a, you know, this, which I got a 10 pack from the greenhouse mega store for $14. So this will be a much cheaper option than doing these if you don't need these. If you need these, if you want your plants to get more mature, if you're wanting to get a head start on your seeds and start them early, um, by all means do this. It is great. I mean, I've done this for several years. Um, and then another thing, you don't have to even use this. You guys can go to your local Walmart or 
a dollar store, whatever's close to you guys and buy solo cups. I remember starting my seeds and transplants and up potting in solo cups for years. So do not think that if you don't have these or you don't have access to these that you can't do this. You can. Go get solo cups. That may actually even be a video I do in the future just to show you guys. Be resourceful. Use what you have. Um, I remember it's funny. So we don't use plastic or paper products in our house. So whenever I would go to birthday parties or we would go to church events and people had all these solo cups, I would ask them if I could keep them. And I told them what I was doing because uh, the thought of just buying plastic when I hadn't in so long just kind of you know, made me like, oh, I don't really want to do this. So I would take home solo cups from all those events and I would wash them and clean them and then reuse them. So it was really funny. Uh, a lot of people made fun of me, but you work with what you have. And I did that for several years and it worked great. And the good thing about a solo cup is if you're transplanting something like this, you're able to plant it much deeper and you're able to get a really big, huge established plant. My friend Kira from Homesteading Dreaming, I'll tag her channel below. She started all of hers in solo cups and grow lights in her closet, and they look fantastic. Her pepper plants and tomato plants are wild. So go check her out. That would be a really good resource on practical things you guys can use that you may already be using to up plot your things. So I just wanted to show you guys this today. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for hanging out with me. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel, and I'll talk to y'all soon.